Hey YouTubers, in today's video I'm going to be swapping out this 14 year old stereo system. It's only DVD, tape deck, AM, FM. And I'd like to have a very nice touchscreen unit that has Bluetooth, GPS, as well as a rear backup camera. So I'm going to be swapping that out. I'll show you exactly how it's done. And I'd also like to have not only an accessory socket in the front, but in the back seats I want to have a 12 volt accessory socket as well as a USB port to plug things in to charge. Let me show you the back of the vehicle now. Right here you can see the ashtray. Right above it I'm going to have two holes and in those two holes I'm going to position the 12 volt accessory socket and USB port. There will be links placed in the video description area to all the things that you see in this video. Now I'm going to give you a closer look at what I'm going to be doing first. Now in order to get to this radio to remove it and disconnect the harness, this whole trim piece all the way around has clips. I'm going to be using special tools which I'll show you in a minute to very very carefully pry along this edge until it lifts off. When it does lift off there's going to be a harness at the top going to the clock and possibly another harness that needs to be removed as well as a couple of screws holding a piece of plastic on. Once that's removed I'm going to go down here, the 12 volt accessory socket as well as the USB charging port is going to be tapped into the existing power outlet which is on a 10 amp fuse. So in order to be able to run the wire I'm going to have to open all this up to make it easy. This plastic pops out as well with clips. Gear shift knob, pop this piece of plastic off, take two little pieces out and there's a nut. This slides off and then there's four screws holding this plate down so I could swap that out. Same thing goes for here using the tools which you'll see in a minute carefully pry along the edge until all of this is open down the line. The two sockets are going to be positioned right on the back edge over here beneath this hinge and luckily with this vehicle all you do is pull out this basket makes life easy. Right down there you can see the parking brake adjustment. But I'm going to be making two holes right over here to put the two sockets and then run the wire around. Now I'm going to show you the system that I'll be installing and I'm also going to show you the two accessory sockets. Right here is the system I'll be installing in the vehicle made by Planet Audio. This particular model has very high buyer satisfaction ratings. The unit has many different features it has a 6.2 inch thin film transistor LCD screen, Bluetooth, DVD, CD, GPS, AM FM radio, touch screen, as well as a rear backup camera which can be wired or could be connected wirelessly. You also have a remote control you can leave in the back seat of the vehicle. And right here is a look at everything that I'll be using to install the new sound system. Right here is the GPS antenna, going to be mounted in the upper corner of the windshield by the driver. I'm going to run this wire down the pillar under the dash to the unit. Butt splice connectors with the crimper as well as the stripper, Phillips regular screwdrivers, channel locks, electrical tape. Right here is the trim removal kit. This is going to drill the hole, it's a step drill or a unibit in the back of the center console for those two pieces right there, the 12 volt accessory as well as the dual USB port. Here's a closer look at the remote control. Mounting bracket, wireless receiver and transmitter for the backup camera. Nylon ties, this is a power supply. You could plug it into that red connector there, connect this to power and that yellow wire goes over to the main system using wireless or this cable right here. Right here is the wire harness, everything well explained where each one goes. This is the new shift, look at how perfect that is. New plate, that's a trim plate, hopefully I don't need it. Over there is the spiral wrap or the coil wrap to go around wiring and I'll probably use it, I might not, when I go around those wires leading to the accessory sockets. Let's take a closer look at the two sockets. Okay, this one right here is the USB socket. And you can see it's got this locking ring on the back. 
two blade connectors. Pop this open. And each one of these, you have a 1 amp and a 2.1 amp, 5 volt. And this whole thing is illuminated. Right here is a matching accessory socket. I grabbed it out of another Hyundai Sonata at the salvage yard. So it's all going to match nicely. And both of these are going to be connected in parallel, like you see here. Positive, positive, negative, and negative. Both of these wires will lead over to the other socket. The wire used is 18 gauge wire, which should have no problem handling up to 10 amps. All right, let me get started by taking apart the trim around the radio. All right, so we're going to be removing this entire trim plate. Push here. Should be able to grab this edge and loosen it up. There it goes. That edge popped open. I want to be careful because I don't want to damage any of the trim around here. There it goes. I actually could do it by hand without really using these tools. Let me see if I get out of here a little bit. Easy. Don't want to crack anything. There it goes. You can see the air condition control is going to be attached to this, and this will all be attached. Get in here and grab this without breaking the thing. There it goes. In a minute, I'll show you the clips. Okay. So now, that's out. I'm going to disconnect the clips from behind by the clock. When that's done, we'll take a look at the entire opening. All right, the entire thing popped off. You can see it was attached in four locations using metal clips. Wire harnesses at the top were two, three at the bottom for the AC control. And over here, you can see what the clips look like. I grabbed a bunch of these from the salvage yard. Sometimes they break. If they do, just push a new one on and you're good to go. This is also a great opportunity for me to clean this with a paintbrush. There's a lot of dust inside here. The next step, I'm going to unscrew this with the Phillips, take out the entire radio, and then disconnect it from the harness and antenna. Okay, let's see if this slides out. Very good. I don't know if you can see that. Connector on top, let's give this a squeeze and release. And this right here is the antenna wire. And the old radio's out. Now that the dashboard is opened up with the harness easily accessible, I'm now going to take this piece of plastic out and the one just in front where the power outlet is located. Now if I reach inside here, I could probably push up from the bottom to get these clips to release. Yep. And... You can see it lifted up nicely. There's a clip holding it there, and another one over here. Let's see if I could do it this way. Maybe grab inside here. There's a clip right in here. Don't want to stress this too much because it might crack right here, even though this is very thick plastic. This one I could probably pull up on. See if I can get in here. There it goes. These come in very handy. See that? And the good thing about this plastic is you won't damage the vinyl or plastic in the center console area. This side's off. Maybe we could lift from the front. Oh. Alright, so there's a clip, two clips here, which means directly opposite, there's two clips there. Let's try this tool. See if that can fit in there and lift it up. Get it this way. There it goes. Almost. A little bit of a pain in the neck. Got it. There we go. All this should lift completely off. 
unscrew those, and I'm going to pop this button off, put the whole new handle and plate on. The next thing I'm going to do after that is run the wires to the back of this console, drill the two holes, mount the 12 volt socket and dual USB, and connect it over to here. This plate comes off when I take off the two Phillips screws, one here and the other one located there. All right, this is what it looks like when everything has been removed. Clean path all the way to the back. Okay, let's take these screws off here. This did have a clear coat on it, but it wore off over time. I'll keep this. Never know, I may want to respray it and use it again one day. So this is off, but can't do much until this is off. This one I really don't care about mangling. It should pop off. Take out the spring right here. This piece of plastic on top, or rubber, I think it's rubber. Yep, pushed all the way down. This is being held down with a nut. And the only way to get it was using a deep socket, 12 millimeter, all the way down. Now I'm going to take off the old plate. Here's the lights. Could be an incandescent lamp with a covering over it, or it could be an LED. I could always swap these out if I ever wanted. Position the plate back in. A lot better than the other one. Not perfect, but still, still pretty good. Let me screw that on. Lined up nicely. Tighten that down good. Okay, let me put the shift knob back in. Pop the button here, slide it over, tighten the nut, put the button back on, and that'll be finished. The next step, I'm going to drill the two holes in the back of the center console so I could put the accessory sockets. Alright, the USB is going to go on the left side, right over here. I made sure it's free and clear so when the box goes back in, it doesn't hit. The Unibit is the best, it doesn't chew up the plastic, and it makes a nice clean cut. Alright, here you can see where I tied the wires in, leading to the USB and 12 volt accessory socket. Positive wires tapped into the orange wire on the harness. And the black wire, you can see right down here, connects to that bolt on the chassis for the ground. Alright, this is the harness right here, factory harness. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to be using an adapter. I'm going to cut these wires off about three quarters of an inch away from the harness and then I'm going to put in the new harness right here that's going to plug into the radio. I'm going to connect everything together using these butt splices. These are 22 to 18 gauge. I went online I found the wiring diagram for this harness so I know exactly where each one of these wires goes when I go to connect them to the new harness. For your vehicle you're going to have to look up online to find out the color codes as well as the position in the harness. Here's my antenna wire ready to go. Now for the system you also have to have wires coming from the reverse light as well as the brake light and this is the cable you see right here. This wire here I tapped into the reverse lights 
And mine was located by the driver's side where your feet go on the bottom left. Where you go to open up the hood, there's a little panel. And you can see it right here in this image. Now the wire that's supposed to be connected to the parking brake, you're going to take that wire from the stereo and you're going to tap into this wire right here. This plugs into the parking brake lever. When you lift the lever all the way up, this wire, which has voltage coming from the light on the dash, goes to ground, allowing the light to light up. If you would like to bypass that safety feature, it's very simple to do. I don't recommend doing it, but take the wire from the system that says parking brake and just connect it to the chassis ground. Now the next thing I'm going to do is hook up the GPS antenna. I'm going to run the wire from here under the dashboard and it's going to go up the pillar right over here. I'm going to pull off that piece of plastic up the whole column. The wire is going to run down that column to hide it and I'm going to affix the GPS antenna right up there in the upper left hand corner of the windshield. Let me wire that up and we're going to be one step closer to installing the new system. Okay, the antenna is installed and the plastic is back on the pillar. Okay, here's the wire from the GPS antenna. The next step, I'm going to take the harness off and install the new one. Okay, everything is nicely connected together. The old harness is gone. GPS, there's the new harness for the radio, antenna. And right over here is the receiver for the wireless backup camera. And what I did, it's tapped into the wires, in this case yellow, which is 12 volt accessory. It only receives power when the key is in the on position. And the black wire is connected with the ground going to the connector. All you do is take this end right here, plug it in the back of the unit, and it will connect with the camera in the back. We'll be connecting the back camera up very shortly, but let me put this all back together first. This unit also has a provision, if you want it, you can connect this through an interface to have a steering wheel control to operate the radio. And here's the sound system installed. Just a little note, I could not use the new brackets on the sound system, so I ended up taking the old brackets, hammering them out, drilling new holes, measuring and screwing them onto the new radio, or the new sound system, and by doing that, I was able to get a perfect fit. Here you can see the rest of the console back together and the accessory socket and USB. Now there is one more thing I need to do. I need to install the rear backup camera. Alright, this is how I routed the wire. I removed the liner inside the trunk and you can see the yellow connection and the red in the center. Right behind here is the license plate. I drilled a 9 16 inch hole just behind the top edge of the license plate so I can insert the cable. Comes out right here. Nylon tied on. Right here is the module. You can see the antenna. And I brought it through the inside of this boot and it's all the way to right here. I'll go inside the fender. Once this wire is inside, I'll take the black wire. I'll connect it to ground and then I'm going to look for a red accessory positive or switch on positive wire to connect this to. Let me show you what it looks like by the license plate. And this is what the reverse camera looks like after it's been fully installed. You notice that it's white. I decided to paint it white because when it was black it stood out too much so it looks much better. Now we're going to go inside the vehicle. I'm going to show you how everything works. Let's power the system up. First thing I'm going to do is show you the backup camera when I put it in reverse. And then I'll use the Bluetooth from my phone to show you the audio quality. You can see there's an auxiliary input, USB, right here it says AUX, memory card, if you want to plug one in, different modes, and up here is eject for the CD or DVD. This says map, I'm not too sure what that is. What I'm going to do now is put the parking brake down. I'm going to put it in reverse, and you're going to see some kids going by, making noise in the middle of my video, of course. Here we go. Let's see. 
Alright, the bicycle. The sun is glaring, so it's hard to see. There you go, another one. I'm sure they'll hang around while I'm trying to do my video. Let's see. Alright, so now I'm going to put this back to park. And let me turn on my phone. It's already connected. Here we go. see how well that sound quality is. Now what I'm going to do, first not show you any glare, if I can, I'm going to push right here, it says mode. I think this right here goes to DVD and CDs. Push this button here. That's the radio, I don't want to play that because they might get me for copyright. To get into GPS, you go over here, push that button, and it takes you right into that portion of the unit. The unit works extremely well. I'm very satisfied with the sound quality as well as all the features. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.